What we have here is the wounded, the broken, the irredeemable, the well-made, the badly made. These are engines that have been, uh, in some cases, much loved, in some cases never loved. So I got this engine from eBay, Germany. Uh, and uh, I don't know German, but Chrome will translate that for you. So I was watching it for a while, and I wanted one of these classic uh, model engines, this classic Heisluft machine or hot air engine. But what I didn't know, as you can see by the size of my hand, was how absolutely tiny that was going to be when it arrived. And what I also didn't know was that it's really badly machined. First hint I had of things going wrong was that it, it, it hardly ran at all. Um, and of course, also these little uh, oil cups here are plastic, which is not a good look. They've used a glass um, uh, heating area. And the oil uh, would drip down into that and a sudden change of temperature cracked it. It broke, took it apart, took this out. It is not... Um, fixed into place with rings that are easily, you know, you can easily pull the glass off that, put it back on. Same with the ones in here. Nothing so simple. This uh, glass beaker uh, is was epoxied into place, um, and it had to be all broken off bit by bit, and then that scraped out so I could epoxy another one back in. Again, if I had a lathe and the proper skills, and some, you know, some rings like that, I could have fixed that problem. But I couldn't fix the other problems with this engine. Um, the, the machining on the piston is terrible on this engine. And it's, it's so bad that the engine will only run with, um, you know, 30, 40 car engine oil, which is far heavier than I would like. The friction's terrible. And these... Um, these little connections are not good enough. This, uh, in particular, you can see the problem there, and and I can't, I can't, haven't been able to improve that at all. Um, so, could have been a nice engine. I have got video of it running, which I'll dig up. Um, it's attractive, but. I wouldn't say lazily made, I would just say badly made, really. So that's a shame not every German model engine is, is good. And and you guys, if you're getting model engines, um, you know uh, the warning signs. You, you'll get something on eBay saying um, untested. An untested engine is supposed to uh, make you think that, you know, wishfully thinking it will go when you get it and how happy you'll be. But it's really easy to say untested when an engine simply isn't going to work. And you're not going to test it because then you don't have the knowledge that it's a broken engine. And you can't be blamed on eBay for claiming otherwise. So to me, an untested engine on eBay, you know it's not going to work, really. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to say. I certainly wouldn't risk it. But anyway, this one was new. The guy was making a batch of them with 10 or 20. He was from um, the old East Germany. And um, he's put a lot of work into it, but it's not, it's not good enough for me to consider getting it going again. Here's another German engine with issues. Now, this is uh, an engine by James Maywald.
It's my first vacuum engine and how I adored this engine. How I adored this engine and I used to run it with graphite. Uh, it has an aluminium piston and an aluminium cylinder. Now when I got it, you could see that it was all, uh, all of the machining was and has been done on CNC. These uh, cylinder units, um, you could see the, the machining lines going in. There were um, clear uh, high-speed machining uh, rings going in there. So not um, really not hand-lapped or, or made to be quality. It kept a reasonable um, suction, you know, with this, this holding in. Uh, it much better than it does now but the problem with an look one of the great things about this was uh, unlike engines with a spring on a, um, a cam to operate the valve this engine is not going to be limited by a spring this engine would go ballistically fast it was a lot of fun I loved this engine I ran it lots and lots and lots until I noticed it was running worse and worse and worse and in fact I've, I've worn it out um, so the uh, graphite was not enough for a soft piston and cylinder. Um, what I would ideally like to do with this is get that cylinder uh, remanufactured, really high quality, and replace this aluminium piston with a graphite one. Then I wouldn't have to worry about it. I could run it as fast as I want. We might try and get that one going in a video, but um, I mean, this looks good, doesn't it? It was. Uh, he was running, uh, James was running this as a commercial concern. Um, you know, that flywheel is unusual looking, but it's perfectly, uh, there's no wiggle at all, which I love. Um, but ultimately, I can't use this engine anymore. So that is uh, engines which have manufacturing issues that are showstoppers or were in the past. Uh, this one, uh, most of you will know. This is the kit version of um, Marmod, or Mamod as I called it as a kid, short for Marlins Models, Marmod. Um, double piston, double acting um, uh, loco. This one has been made uh, for meths. And my kids used to run this around on the floor. I couldn't really stop them. They used to run it around, not uh, in running order, but the modifications that have been made to this by whoever assembled it have made a reasonable meth burner here, uh, and they've put a, um, an oiler here. This is a, uh, a displacement oiler. And I don't know if you can see, but on the um, where that displacement oiler goes into the pipe, is a great big crack. So as the kids ran this over the floor, they bumped that um, displacer, pulled it back, and it's ripped a hole in the pipe there. So that engine's not going to go until I fix that. Um, these things are a nightmare to run on a track inside, uh, especially if it's a crappy old track like this. Um, so if I was going to get this going again, I'd make a sort of a stand for it, like it was on a like it was an engine test stand with a couple of bearings here um, and, and so I could run this in place. Um, I've replaced the, um, the, the water sight glass here um, and a few other things on this engine and I had a lot of fun with that when I was, I was a kid. Uh, when I was, let's see, about 22 is when I bought this engine. I'd not been married very long before um, Penny and I started having uh, enough money to um, follow my hobby. So my first engine in uh, my first engine since about 1993 was this one. Uh, bought it in about 2003 as a kit from England. It is a. DRM engine, Birmingham, England. Um, I made a pretty good job of this. In fact, I built three of them and sold two 
for quite good money uh, on New Zealand's equivalent of eBay, which is called Trade Me. Um, this engine had minimal mechanical noise. It ran very nicely. Um, uh, there was no wiggle on, on the uh, flywheel. There is now because I've bent the crankshaft by trying to adjust something when it was running. And I got something stuck there like that and at, at high speed. So first mistake. Second mistake, not turning it over for about 10 years. And I came back and this uh, the brass parts inside the cylinder here had totally seized. And taking it apart, I found... A sort of a green blob had uh, formed around the uh, the valve in here, and it just was quite hard to break that. You know, even when I got this all all apart. Now I need to uh, retune this to get it going. Not a big problem. Um, the only other design problem with this is the weak chain that they supplied, which I have to keep fixing. But I'm going to get this going again. It's not going to be too much of a problem. Um, nice kit, uh, some little, little bits I added with, was this, um, brass floor that's made out of, uh, part of an old radio from the fifties. Um, I've used, uh, model airplane control line cable to, um, have a pretend winch there. Um, ideally this engine would have a sight glass and a pressure gauge you could say it doesn't need them um, and also anyone who knows steam engines will know that working in this scale gets to be a bit of a, a, a fiddle with the uh, regulator um, that's a, that's a lovely engine and it, and it runs at a nice scale speed and I know that I'm upset with bending the, um, the crankshaft but I should get that going again and I can that will go again this will go again I can do those, uh, oh, it's the burner from the traction engine, um, this will never go again, I never did go, uh, this I doubt it, but it's not a bad looking engine, uh, this one, well, should probably get, you know, rather than spending the money on a lathe and then learning how to do all the things that that needs, I should probably get someone to help me with that, because that um, uh, has a certain um, ballistic charm when it's going. These are the models in my collection that are not running currently. The Star Power Sterling engine. Star Power Sterling engine, at least advertised as a Sterling engine, but it's not, it's a Manson engine. Um, meant to have a glass uh, heating area here and the glass displacer here, you can see a part of it. Uh, so this is the inside of a Manson engine. You've got your uh, two valves that happen at the end of the stroke and they line up with... Uh, stuff in there except that they don't on this one this engine never ran it almost ran like it you know if you heated it up to the point where the glass was practically melting then it would you know you could almost feel it was trying to run but the things never lined up it was never going to go and uh, as I took it apart trying to uh, fix these issues or see if they could be fixed uh, this particular this particular glass displacer busted and they didn't have spare parts for that they gave you a spare uh, heating outside glass tube not spare ones for this and I knew that that wasn't the problem anyway I mean I fixed the glass thing with glue um, and confirmed to myself everything was uh, lubricated as well as it could be uh, it wasn't going to change it by shortening or lengthening this. It just simply wasn't going to work. It didn't cost a lot, but it was junk. And if you look at the amount of wiggle here, 
yeah it was crap it, it put me off Chinese engines for some time uh, the next Chinese engine I got was the V twin uh, uh, vacuum engine and um, and that also uh, that arrived bent crankshaft and didn't run for some years until I uh, after lockdown this year, after building my lockdown engine, I had a lot of extra um, confidence in what I could do, and I got that one working beautifully. This one's never going to go. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 pretty bad. It's pretty crappy. Well, 